Hello again, this is Grandpa Lance from Grandpa Lance's blog. Um, last time I left out a few things about uh, the template for songwriting and recording for Cubase 7.5. Among those things is uh, coloring each of these tracks, a color that will help you recognize where uh, the track you recorded or what track you want to find is located. Uh, it's really easy to do. You just go over here to the inspector and select a color. Now my suggestion is to keep uh, like instruments in the same color. Like for instance, in this case I'm using green for the guitars and I'm going to use yellow for the bass uh, and so on and so forth. Well, let's go ahead. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make uh, let's, Already I'm having difficulty finding where my things are, and this is why you probably should color code these things to help you find uh, tracks and things that you're looking for. All right, I've got the vocals as, that, as pink. Now I'm going to go ahead and color these synths uh, purple. All right. See how much easier this will make uh, locating these things. All right, it's really easy to do. Just go ahead and do that, and it will help you locate certain types of tracks. All right, one of the things I forgot to add into um, the songwriting template was a, was a chord track. Um, a chord track in Cubase, well, let's go ahead and set it up first, and we'll talk about it. You go to Project Window, or Project uh, Toolbar, and you go ahead and add track. You go down and add chord. All right, let's go ahead and color that a color that we can locate at a later point. Let's go ahead and make that, say, blue. All right. Now, a chord track uh, was going to ask you what tracks do you want to monitor. And that's going to be a MIDI or an instrument track. We're going to go ahead and pick Halion SE. I don't usually use Halion. Uh, I usually use, uh, for my piano sounds anyway, I usually use Native Instruments Contact 4. However, uh, due to certain requests from, from subscribers, they've asked that I go ahead and use more of Cubase's internal instruments. So here we go. All right. Under the inspector, under chord track, uh, you'll find a thing called voicings. Now, this is basically asking you, do you want the voicings of, of the chords to be those of piano, basic chords, or guitar? Um, I usually choose piano just, just as the diversity against my guitars that, I'm going to usually, that I usually record after the fact. Um, under options, it's asking you what type of chords you would like to have available. I usually choose rock, easy jazz, although there's other selections. Uh, rock, easy jazz are usually pretty common chords that you'll find in most uh, music. All right, now that you've got that set up, what do you do with it? Well, let's go ahead and expand that track a little bit so you can see what we're going to do. What you're basically going to do is you're going to go ahead and add chords. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and add a few chords. Uh, let's just make it eight measures of chords. Now, at this point, there are no chords on these, on these uh, particular, on this track. These are just placeholders at this point. Now, you go ahead and click each one, and you get in what is called an editor. But basically, it's giving you a choice of chords to put in. Um, let's go ahead and make this one a D. And we'll make it D major, just, just as a matter of course. All right, that's your first chords of D. Now, something neat happens. Well, a lot of people run into this problem. You get the very first chord, and if you don't have a great knowledge of... Uh, of music theory or, or songwriting, you have some difficulty choosing the next chord. Well, this particular chord track and its chord editor window allows you to get some help there. Uh, the first level of it, now you can choose different things in this. You can do the full one, four, five, one progressions or the half progression. Or the, there's, there's all kinds 
uh, possible progressions that are available here. Um, I usually like to stick with the 1451. It's the most common uh, chord progression in pop music. So anyway, the chord system offers you certain choices as far as the chord that will follow the first chord. Now, it also tells you what that, what that would be. For instance, this D that I chose is basically asking me or telling me that it's A major. Well, that's not exactly the case. It could be, in this, in this situation, if I wanted the fourth chord to be a G, well, then that key changes. Let's go ahead and stick with that. Now let's go to the next chord. And the chord system offers me some other choices. Now, uh, if I want to keep this particular thing in, in uh, G major, I would choose a C, where it's offered me an A, which I want it to be in D major. And as you see here, it's back in D major. So these are the chords. And then the next chord it's going to offer me is going to be obviously a D, because the progression is one, four, five, one. One, four, five, one. And those are the chords that would be in a D major uh, key. All right. Uh, but it can also do some, some weird things, uh, some things that are a little more uh, esoteric, as, as they would say. You can add, uh, by moving the complexity, and then as you see, the complexity adds more chord choices for your, in your menu. Um, for instance, the darker colors, as you see here, it's, it's saying the next chord in a D major uh, progression should be a G. Uh, if you wanted to go back to an, e major, an A major uh, tonality, you can switch it to an E. I'm going to do something odd and just go and choose the E minor. And as you see, at this point, it's still D major as the key, but it's asking me at this point if I want to proceed any further in that direction. So it's asking me, do I want to use an A minor? Well, no, I really don't. Um, so at that, at that point, I can either choose something that will keep me in that key. Let's go back and add, and once again, you don't have to stick with this. You can always go back and just add chords as, as you choose. Um, let's do that. Now I'm just kind of randomly choosing chords at this point. Um, and to be honest with you, I don't know how it's going to sound. I have an idea. All right. Let's go ahead and play that progression. boring as far as a progression is concerned. Now, once you've gotten that progression, now I would go ahead and add another MIDI track here. Let's go ahead and add a MIDI track next door to it. And what you can do at this point is you can actually drag these down to the next adjacent track or any track, it's a MIDI track and you actually have many notes that you can fudge with. All right, now, what else can you do with this? Well, once you've got it on the MIDI track, uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's do something odd here. Let's go ahead and choose Retrolog as the MIDI source. And let's go ahead and use the MIDI mi modifier, not MIDI modifier, let's go to MIDI insert and choose Arpeg SX, which is an arpeggiator. And if you choose one of these uh, presets, what you'll get is something like this. Okay, let's go ahead and make those eighth notes.
let's try this again. Okay, you're not a great keyboard player. I'm not. But you want to add a piano sounding or attack to these chords. What you're going to do is you're basically going to grab your MIDI keyboard and play just about any note you choose or any chord you choose and it will follow these chords. Let's go ahead and give that a shot. So now you're going to choose chords and analyze the chords and apply hit. Now let's hear what we've got. So you've got a keyboard part now. Okay, let's go ahead and add, do something a little different. Let's go ahead and drag these chords down to the next, uh, down here. Let's pull them to this one. pad shop at this point. Now let's go ahead and give that a play. Pull this over to the next one, and let's do something a little different. Let's let's copy that and pull it over to the next line. We'll go ahead and go ahead and paste that one there. Now, under Retrolog, let's do something a little different. Let's go ahead and use a MIDI insert and choose your page and let's use uh, let's just use mostly mostly down and let's go ahead and also uh, do a little change on the MIDI modifiers and let's go ahead and just bring this all down keep the tempo keep the let's bring the transpose down an octave and let's hear what we've got. Not bad, not great. Well, I hope this particular uh, tutorial has been helpful. In the next few weeks, I'm going to be going over some other songwriting uh, techniques and tools to use inside of Steinberg Cubase 7.5. Um, this has been Grandpa Lance at Grandpa Lance's blog. Thanks again.